I slept at exactly 11 p.m. That's when it all started. How's the condition with your leg at this point? Still the black? It's rotting. It's no longer black at this stage. You can see through the 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 skin was actually falling off, so you could see the bone, Yo. which was already turning black. What This is witchcraft. So someone intentionally did that? Yes, intentionally. Somebody that you know? Someone that I know. Someone related to us. So when did your family member confess to doing what she did to you? And then she said, you know, I never meant to do it. It's just that I was upset. Sure. Hello there, San Manani Dumelang, and welcome to yet another exciting episode of I Have Been Through the Most podcast. Oh, yes. You'll know we're on social media, okay? So please go ahead and follow us on TikTok, Instagram, as well as Facebook. Today we have Tembele Zizo, who is here to join us to share her story. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So before we get into it, guys, yeah. please remember that we are on Spotify, we are on Apple Podcasts, we are also on Africa Podcast Network. Make That's sure right. that you listen, you like, you subscribe, you interact, you comment. We absolutely love to hear what you have to say and also love to hear what you have to say. My queen, <laughs> tell us a little <laughs> bit about yourself. Thank you. Um, well, I am a Tembelise, Zizo Chanda, and I don't know if I should reveal my age. I mean, okay, it always reveals itself. So. <laughs> I'm 30. Um, I'm a mother of three with number four on the way. Whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> you didn't tell us that. I'm Congratulations! Glad. You are yeah. such a mommy. I'm yeah. like, Whoa. I am such a mommy. But that it doesn't end there. Oh. There, and there are two more. So I can wow. say that this is actually number six. Two more away. Oh. How so? So I'm raising five children. Oh. Three are mine and two are my foster babies, which also happen to be my brothers. Oh, oh yeah. that's cute. Yes. Okay. So obviously you'll understand as the story goes, but how did it end up there? Okay, <laughs> okay Mama Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Mama Bear. I like that. Yeah. I love babies. Uh, I, was, I was born in Eastern Cape. So in Dungkasa I was born in Eastern Cape. I in a very small town called Dudugya. Mm -hmm. And when my mother had me, she was like 21. Mm -hmm. She was at school. Um, so my dad was one of those who just decided to abscond, you know, from the responsibilities of being a father. Apparently, um, he was not even sure that I'm his. He sort of denied the pregnancy in a way. You know how they say, I'm going to see when the child is born, mm. you know? Like, I'm not going to say it straightforward that it's not mine, yeah. but I'm not going to do anything about it either. So my grandmother had to now step up. My mother went back to school and my grandmother had to be the mother. And when I was about um, six or five, five, six, my grandmother had to leave us in Eastern Cape and come to Joburg. I was already working here for a well-known steel company. So when they left us in Eastern Cape now, we were left in a child had at home because I was mm -hmm. left with my youngest aunt who was 13. You? She was 13 and her cousin was 14. So where's your mom? My mom is in Cape Town at this time. She moved. So um, I don't know why. I never got the chance to ask her. Yeah. But then she moved from Eastern Cape and went to Cape Town to stay with some family. I don't know. Maybe it was for job hunting or something. I don't know. I never asked. Mm. So now I'm um, in Eastern Cape with my youngest aunt who was uh, 14 and her cousin was 13 and another cousin of ours who was uh, seven and I was about six. So it was a child head at home. We're no staying adult. No adult. Phew. At all. Um, we stayed together for like a year or maybe a year and a half. Um, yeah. So it was just us kids. So my aunt, um, can you imagine a 14-year-old have to cook for a six-year-old? Mm. Have to wash for a six-year-old? Mm. Needs to make sure the six-year-old gets to school. Before she gets to school, you know, have to eat. Um, so it was such a difficult time. I, ca I can still remember those times. Mm. It was a long time ago, but I can't, I can't seem to forget it. You know, my aunt and I are very close. And I always tell her that you're actually my mother. You mm. raised me, you know, as young as you were, but you managed to raise me. Um, so what would happen when we stayed in Eastern Cape is that we survived on, isn't it, that we had in the garden. No one was working. 
and my grandmother would call maybe like uh, once a month or twice sometimes mm -hmm. to say that I'm going to send money we didn't have any phones at the time yeah. so it was around 2000 so can you imagine now um, my aunt would have to go and sit at the bus stop the whole day waiting Wait. for a bus that comes from Joburg mm. to give us that 200 rand that's supposed to last us the entire month so your mom is not working as well at this point we're not even communicating she's not sending I money she's not even coming to nothing. check on you for over huh. a year nothing yo okay nothing i didn't even speak to my mother those years like i would just wonder when i see other kids with their moms what it's like to have a mother hmm. you know i know she's my mother because she's my i know she's my grandmother and i call her mama you know, because she raised mm. me. But I also know that she's not my mother. You know how people are. Mm. They'd be like, oh, yeah, fine, I know Papa. And I'm like, who's Papa? Isn't she supposed to be my sister? That's my mom. Mm. And they're like, no, that's your mom. I'm like, oh, she's my mom. So you would you'd literally you found forget, out. Yeah. 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 So years went by. Um, I think about a year later or a year and a half or so, my grandmother now decided to take us. To come to Joburg. Now that's my youngest aunt and I, and then the cousins that we were staying with, they didn't have parents, both parents, mm -hmm. so they had to move to another family member. Yeah. So we moved to Joburg. That and was a good thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was excited. I don't want to lie. Aww. You know, you only see Joburg in the magazines, <laughs> all magazines that you see on the street. Yeah. Because you don't even buy magazines. You see newspapers and magazines on the street and you're like, there's lights and tall buildings. I'm going there. You know, the excitement. I'm going to be in a bus. I've never been in a bus before. Yo. <laughs> I'm going to be in a bus. Like, you used to walk to school, so you're not even used to being mobile. Mm. And then we got to Joburg, and I was so excited, thinking, whoa, I'm going to see big, big buildings. I'm going to, you know, it's going to be fun. Until I got to Joburg, and to realize that it's not so much fun. Um, my grandmother was staying in a shack. Um, sure. A spray in a very small shack which was behind someone else's yard. Not nothing that you imagined. <laughs> <laughs> nothing that I imagined. It was not so fun. It was a small iron shack. Like I have a picture of it somewhere at the back of my book. Um it has a small pink <laughs> cupboard. Yeah. The kitchen was just that, that small pink cupboard. Yeah. And then the uh the bed, you know the small beds. It's yeah. three yeah. Single bed or single quarter, bed. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Only that. So that's for the adults, obviously. And those kids, we just have to be packed as sardines on the, on floor, the floor. On the floor. Because there's no space. And we still survived, you know. But I was still a child. I didn't really care much. I'm like, okay, it's not as good as it is on the newspapers and the magazines because we didn't really have TV. Mm. Uh, but I didn't mind much because now I'm around adults. Mm. I don't have to uh, go to the neighbors and ask for food. Because when we were back at Eastern Cape, my aunt would ask me to... We're okay. hungry, you know, and we have nothing. She would ask me to go because yeah, now she's a bit um, older. Okay. You know, she she understands how it's like to be ashamed and yeah. it's not easy for her. And for me, I'm just a small child, you know, and yeah. Yeah, just just go. Then it's it's so much easier than whatever leftovers they give us. I come and share. So now it was. Um, the nicer thing was now, I'm not even going to deal with that anymore. My grandmother's here, my aunts are here, you know, life is a whole lot better. That was just after 2000. And then my mother joined us in, in Joburg. Mm. Now I haven't seen her in a very long time. And then now she arrives. She was not well, so they had to take care of her. She had to come and be with the family because she was not well health wise mm. and then um, they took care of her she recovered everything was fine and years went by when I turned um, 10 um, a, a cousin of mine was sexually assaulted by a stepdad actually two of my cousins one mm -hmm. of them it was a stepdad and the other it was a real dad so they were exactly the same age. You know when the families are talking, you're not being involved, mm. but you get to overhear things here yes. and there. Yeah, that yes. information. Yes, like, mm. you get to hear bits and pieces that this one did that. You know, they're calling the cops, they're confronting the mother. Why aren't you getting your husband arrested and so forth? Mm. So when that thing was happening, there was a time when I was supposed to do a school project and I had to borrow um, duct tape from 
same street that we lived in. Mm-hmm. So when I went, it was around seven, but it was in winter, it was dark. Mm-hmm. So I went to borrow it, and as I was walking, we had like a narrow street, like very short, like like small. Mm-hmm. I could feel that someone was walking behind me. Started it was before the the incident with the amputation. Mm-hmm. So I was I tried to walk faster because I was afraid it's dark. Yeah. You know? I could feel someone is walking. You know, in the township, you can't really trust. Someone is walking. I'm like, should I ask? No, I can't ask. I'm only 10. I just need to run. Then I started running. As I started running, this person also started running Mm. behind me. I ran as fast as I could. The nearest house that I could get to, which had a a gate opened, I pushed the door, ran to their bedroom, and went under the bed Mm. without saying anything. So the grandmother in that house, there was an old, old lady that was staying there. She went out to check what's going on. The first thing she did was to jump out to check who's following you. Why are yeah. you so scared? So when she went outside, there was um, this guy which was dressed in black. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of rape happening in our town ta- in our township. Okay. So there was this guy dressed in black, and he was like, "We are So I don't I don't know what that meant or what was supposed to happen to me that night. Mm. So she came back to me and said, "Did you see the face?" Because and they say gate. So you what know? does that mean? It means um Oh my goodness, I'm trying to look I'm, I'm trying mm-hmm. to find the, the right words. Yeah. Yes, for the right words. Um oh, you lucky. Like oh, you lucky, like you lucky okay. child, yes. It's your lucky, lucky day. That yes, you, you made lucky it. that you made it. Yes, you lucky that you Yo. made it. Who said yeah. that? The guy. The guy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sure. I could not recognize the voice. I couldn't even look at the face because I had to just run, run with my face, you know, facing up front. I just couldn't even look at him. So they asked me, um, can you recall anything about this guy? I couldn't remember anything. But at that time, I was now scared. I didn't even want to go home. I just didn't want to leave that house. Mm. So um, that grandma had to now take me home back to my grandmother. Fast forward to uh, about a year later. Uh, so now what happens a year later, I turn 11. Um, right after my 11th birthday, I think 11, 11th birthday, and then about three months later, mm-hmm. um, it was in October, I remember it was on the, it started on the 10th of October, 2004. Yes, started around there. And I remember this because I have um, a cousin which was born on the 14th of October. So when I was bedridden, they used to, you know, throw him right next to me, you know. Um, so it happened around those dates. So this one night I come back from school. It's a beautiful day. I went to play with my friends. We used to practice. There was a daycare on our street. So we used to go there to practice. Um, you know, just do some traditional dances for the kids' graduation because we were like 11, like a little bit grown-ups mm. at the time. <laughs> we were kids as well, I mean. So we uh, we went there, we had fun, we came back. I had a bath, I remember I was so dirty. Uh, we had a bath, I had a bath. Mm. My grandmother gave me rice. I remember the food that I had that night. Yeah. It was rice, potatoes and tin fish. We had that for supper and then we went to bed. I used to share a bed with my grandmother, so I used to sleep by her legs. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> at that time, I used to share. So at this time, my grandmother had an RTP if, house. If you grew up no in a big family, shy. you understand. <laughs> yeah. When you say you sleep by the legs, there's more space there. There's yeah. too many people by the head side. You go to the end, but yeah. There's more space right mm-hmm. there at the bottom. So at this time, I forgot this part. At this time, my grandmother got a, an RTP house. Okay. So okay. we moved from that check. She was mm-hmm. approved an RTP house, and we moved now to another township in Rwanda Belt. A, as a East Rand. So okay. now I used to share a bed with my grandmother because it was small. It was like a one room and a bathroom. So my aunt and everyone else would be on the floor this time around. Mm-hmm. And I was in the bed with my grandmother. Um, I was in the bed because my grandfather didn't stay with us. You know, so I had <laughs> I had a room in the bed. <laughs> my grandfather yeah. didn't stay with us. He used to yeah. stay closer to where he worked. Okay. Uh, after eating, I slept. At exactly 11 p.m., that's when it all started. I could say that's when all that's when all hell broke loose. At mm. 11, um, I started shaking, like okay, mm. wanna, you know, when you you like um, and then you start shivering and 
you cold, you shivering, but you hot at the same time. You shivering as if you're cold, like but when they touch you, your fever is extremely high. And then I wanted to vomit, and my grandmother was like, "What is wrong?" You know, when you are raised by a grandma, uh, every now and again they clean up your system, like they mm-hmm. help you. It, it, there's no way you're It it doesn't happen. And my grandmother was like, what is going on? What is wrong with you? Mm. And she started praying. She is frustrated. She doesn't know what to do. And I kept on, you know, vomiting and vomiting. Mm. So she called um, my mother. My mother was standing there by the door. Like she was also scared. Like what's going on? And she said, go call the the neighbor. The neighbor was a nurse. Mm -hmm. I said, go call um, the neighbor quickly. She needs to come and help us. You know, we don't, I don't know what to do. Uh, should we take her to hospital? Is it like something that's passing? You know, you, you don't know if you should relax. Yeah. You, when it's a child that's sick, you don't know. You do, just you, never know. You, you yeah. never know. You just can't take the risk. And then the nurse came. And when she checked my temperature, she said, this is not normal. You know, I don't know. It was like uh, around 40 or over 40 or something like that. Mm. Because she ca- came with uh, stuff to check me. Yeah. And she was like, we're calling an ambulance right now. She needs to be in hospital. So they did. The ambulance came. Um, and then it took me to a gemstone. When I got there, especially, it was around 12 midnight. Mm-hmm. That's when I started losing my mind. You know, I started feeling like... Um, dizzy like something is I can't even explain it like something is pulling my mind out of my head sort of Mm. like I can't remember much like I I was screaming and showing my mom look at my legs look at my legs what's going on so what was happening to your legs and my legs at this time they just developed patches everywhere like sores like sores it was like huge patches Mm -hmm. but they were like light green you know as if the blood Mm. stopped in those certain areas. areas yes so it, it so i was just screaming asking my mom look at my legs look at my legs what's going on that's the last thing i remember so according to my mom because now i asked her and my grandmother and my aunt everyone else was taking care of me after you know i regained my senses what really happened because this is the last thing i remember mm. so my, my my mom is saying that um after those patches were like green um, and then I was acting all crazy, like I was, you know, like a mad person. Mm. They just had to tie me into the bed because I was starting to pull stuff apart, to jump, you know, to act all crazy. So they had to tie me into the bed, put me into those um, barricaded ones so I do not jump around. Um, and then they would just open up for me to go to the bathroom and I would still look for an escape route, you know, yeah. every chance and at I that get. Time, you don't even remember how you I were behaving. Don't like it was like something took over you. Yes, it was like something took over me. I don't remember anything. Even with the patches that were covering my legs, mm. I didn't feel any pain. So my mom says, um, day one, the patches were green. The following day when she came back, the patches were black, like pitch black. Yeah. And then she asked the doctors, what is going on? What's they ran every test under the sun that they could think of. Nothing came back positive. And then it came down to, um, my mom says, um, then the doctor said, isn't it HIV? Mm. And my mom, <laughs> my mom, when she tells me the story, she says, I got annoyed, not at uh, the suggestion, you know, yeah. but the manner of which he approached this whole thing. And then she says, I told him to just, just test it. Just, just test whatever that mm. you have to test. Um, I'm the mother, she's 11, she's a minor. So if I say test anything that is possible, test it. So they tested the HIV, your sugar diabetes, everything that you can mm. think of. Still, everything was negative. So my mom was like, so what is going to happen here? They said, um, we don't know. We're going to call other hospitals and just find out if anyone, you know, knows from anywhere yes, knows or is familiar with sure. this. And if anyone has ever seen anything like this, because... We have never seen anything like this in this hospital. It wasn't this is our food first poisoning case. from what you ate. No. Nothing. <laughs> no. And according to my mom, the only thing they gave me as medication was painkillers because they assumed that I was in pain. And you were not even feeling no. anything. You had like an outer body experience. <laughs> no. mm. I was not even there. Yeah, not there. Okay, maybe I was there, but I was not really there. Mm. You know, so they gave me painkillers just to try and, you know, kill the pain, which I did not even feel 
So time continued. Um, my mom left on the mm-hmm. second day, third day when she came back to hospital. The nurse called her to the side and said, I need to speak to you, but the doctors are not supposed to know that mm-hmm. I'm telling you this. You need to take your child out of this. I don't know what you believe in, but we Africans and such things do happen. So now uh, my mother says the nurse called mm-hmm. her to the side and said, I don't know what you believe in. But um, what I'm going to tell you is that your child is going through some experience. It could be possessed or whatever. I don't know. I also Mm. don't know. I'm also a human being like you. But what I can suggest is that go find other, you know, ways to help your child. Maybe try a prophet. Maybe if you believe in Sangomas, go to a Sangoma. Um, Do whatever it takes Mm. because this child is not going to survive. And then my mom was like, "Why? What makes you think of that?" My mother was a Christian, yeah. so she didn't. It didn't even come to her mind that yeah. you know it could be anything like this. Um, my mom was like, "Okay, what makes you think of this?" And the nurse was like, "Throughout the night, I was working night shift, which is why I'm still here at eight o'clock because I wanted to tell you this myself before I leave." So she was supposed mm. to have knocked off at seven. Knocked off, yeah. She didn't leave. She waited for my mother mm. so she can explain to her what is happening or what she heard. Mm. So the nurse says that um, I was speaking throughout the night. And she's saying that the other night she was talking, but then I ignored her because I thought, you know, because she's been acting like someone who's losing her mind. Mm. Um, so let's... Um, let me wait a bit. But now I'm noticing that this is happening every night. This child gets visitors every night. Sure. Okay, my mom was like, what What kind of visitors? Did you see them? Mm. No, I can't see them, but I hear her talk to them. I came closer. I put my chair like next to her bed. Like I wanted to, you know, to see mm. what's going to happen here. I listened to her. She was so calm. She was not screaming. She was not trying mm. to jump out of the bed. She was not doing all the weird things she does throughout the day. Having a full-blown conversation. Though. Yes. Mm. She is calm, having a full-blown conversation with something that none of us can see. Oh, so yeah. Had, oh, yeah. What exactly were you saying? So according to the nurse, she says that um, I was talking to these people saying that, um, asking them mm. to confirm that they're coming on Friday. Are you coming on Friday? So you're fetching me on Friday. And they kept on saying, yes, we're coming on Friday. She is assuming that they are mm. saying that they're coming on Friday. Uh, but that's what based on what I'm saying because mm-hmm. I'm... Um, it's, it's as if like I'm happy that they're coming. I'm like, okay, come back, come back. You're coming to fetch me on Friday. But all of you, all three of you, you're all coming. And then she's like, okay, so it's three of them. Yeah. It's not just one person that mm. is supposed to be fetching this child. And so then I'm then, sure the nurse at that point is thinking, this child is dying on Friday. <laughs> yeah. So people are fetching on Friday and yes, please she's do something because we don't somewhere. have a diagnosis. Mm, no. Oh. And Friday, I think it was like maybe two days away Yeah. from then. So, um, did your family think maybe this is witchcraft? Because it's like, sounds like a spiritual attack if they can't find anything <coughs> in hospital. So, yes, immediately after what the nurse conveyed to them, then mm. they believed that, no, this is actually bigger than what we see. Mm. You know, this it has nothing to do with the physical world. We need to get help. What happened so, next? Did your mom consider taking you out of hospital she did she didn't even think twice about it so my mom spoke to the doctors to ask them to release me so the doctors like were refusing so according to her she spoke to the, they were in a meeting the entire day with the doctors yeah. they finally agreed to release me um at about 12 midnight that day that time i'm from a poor family we don't even have a car <laughs> You have to how figure out how they, to get how home. How are we gonna get home at twelve midnight? How's, how's the condition with your leg at this point? Still the black. It's rotting. It's no longer black at this stage. It's now rotting. It has cracks. There's um it's leaking mm, mm. dirty, smelly water ish mm. thing. So they have to keep drying me up, putting, you know, some paper towels to try and dry mm. it up. So at this it's getting worse. Every day, it's you know, it's an extra. Both your legs, leg, both my legs. So my right leg at this stage, um, you can see through, the 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 skin was actually falling off, so you could see the bone, Yo. which was already turning black. 
and you are 11 years old i'm 11 years point. old i'm this tiny cute little girl that is just going just through so the now most. your mom takes you your legs are rotting but she's taking you out of hospital because she's also yes. desperate and doesn't yes. know what's going on she doesn't you. know what's going and on and you go away from there so um they went back to the township to try and find someone who can assist with the car mm-hmm. and they did get help came back to the hospital to fetch me we went back to the township so they didn't want to sleep with me they were afraid you know after everything they've heard they were now afraid they were um i remember at that time my mother was seeing this guy who was my stepdad i can say mm-hmm. Um, so I remember um, now this is the part now I started regaining my conscious mm. just a little bit mm. so I remember feeling cold and I could feel that I am sitting on someone's shoulders you know so he carried me my stepdad he carried yeah. me and they were walking with me throughout the night trying to find help and then um, in the wee hours of the morning they finally got into this house. You know, these people that work with traditional healing, mm. they have their times. I don't work in the dark. I don't work when it's cloudy. I don't work when it's, you know, they always have their own rules. Mm. I don't know what they're based on. But um, we found this one particular one, which was open at night. Open. Open. In wide, the wee hours of the wide night. Wide open. The doors were opened. Sure. Okay. My mother walked in. And she asked the guy, um, we need help. Are you working? You know, because, you know, in the township, back in the days, you'd see by flag. Mm. If there's a prophet here or whatever, that, that's how. Oh. They, yeah, they didn't advertise on social media. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the gates. This yeah. Is, there's they a sign. Put a, yeah, they'd put a, you know, like when you're getting married, they'd put a white flag. Yes. And then when there's a prophet, they'd put a yellow or a green. I don't know mm, what symbolizes what. Okay. So they saw by a flag and then my mother went in to ask for help. And the So guy, your parents are just walking around, walking, not even knowing. They were not, they were walking blind in wow they were walking blind. So, did they, they find okay was there someone available to help yeah. you what did they say so this guy was sitting there next to his candles it's like he's waiting yeah he, it's like he's waiting okay. he was sitting there on the floor Hating. praying with the door open and my yeah. mother walked in and he was like all of you tell everyone to walk, to come in my mother was like oh you already know that there's a lot of us we came in so confusing i know we all went in, we sat down, you know, you sit mm. down on the floor, then he started praying and then he said, I've been waiting for you for three days. Huh. Yeah. He said, I've been waiting for you for three days. And my mom out of shock, she's like, what? Like how? You don't even know us. Why would sure. you be waiting for us for three for days? For us, yeah. He said, no, I, I, I had visions, I had visions about you guys coming. I was expecting that you would come immediately when the child so started getting sick. So that's why the gate and the mm. door was open. So um, he, then he started um, doing his own thing, praying, and then what this is witchcraft. This is how it got to you. You had to step on it. That's all that you had to do. Just step on it. And you did exactly that because the person was around. You know, he was. she was there to ensure that you do it the right way when you didn't know you didn't even notice that something was being done to you so there was something that she poured on the floor in your grandmother's house and you just had to step on it and, and when it you was did, meant for you it was meant for me so someone intentionally did that yes somebody that you know someone that i know someone related to us did they reveal who that person is he did reveal mm-hmm. and then he said um i'm asking you to please don't go and confront her mm-hmm. you know wait for her to confess what's the intention behind that do you know for her to confess Mm-mm. for for her to do that to you as 11 year old it was uh, basically when she finally confessed um she said it was because she was upset with my mother you know, my mother had just came back from Cape Town and then she's finding a job and then maybe her life is going well. And then she has this beautiful child that she's taking care of, you know, um, and her kids are just, yeah, not, not progressing well as, in any way possible. Okay. So, um, you know, with witchcraft, it's always about stupid jealousy, you know, things that don't really make sense. So it was for her to cause my mom pain through me. And she did. And she did. 
unfortunately i suffered the most more than my mom mm. did because i felt the pain and now that i've now regained my consciousness the pain started remember i'm still rotting that hasn't changed <laughs> that hasn't changed and then he said um there isn't any i can't reverse this i can't do anything much i can just um pray about it help you help you help you to stop it you know from growing, growing yes from growing further because it was coming up very quickly you know it was now covering my thighs like i have scars all over even this one here on my face it was like yeah climbing spreading. up spreading so quickly so um he was like i'm just going to stop it and then you just have to go back to the hospital and they will have to remove this leg because it's done So Remember the one I, leg was was more bad than the other yes, one. Yes, the one that I stepped with. Mm. Okay, so it was rotten. It was rotten. I was smelling like there were flies all over all around me. Can you you know now like it's October, mm. like it's hot. sunny, it's hot. There were flies they had to cover me and have things to try and blow the flies away every now and then. Like you wouldn't even sit next to anyone in a public transport. I was smelling so they had to hire a car every now and again you know to take me there mm. to take me there so they took me now to Ebara that's when they took me through um therapy first and just to for me to be mentally ready mm. and then the amputation after the amputation i was like i oh, just just amputation until i realized after the amputation i was like oh this is as, this this is not as easy as I thought it would be you know I struggled to stand on crutches remember I'm 11 I still want to skip rope I want to play on gush I want to do all the things that I did mm. now I can't you know and sometimes I would just get up and fall on my face because I forgot that I don't have a leg yeah <laughs> I forgot that I don't have a leg you know before I get up I need to first mm. get the extra legs so I would forget about that and just get up so when did your family member confess to doing what she did to you so this is how she confessed she went to um my grandma my grandmother's cousin mm -hmm. she is also my grandmother's cousin so mm -hmm. there are three cousins their dads are siblings, are siblings mm -hmm. yes so she went to the other one and said um my mom and my grandmother are accusing her whereas nobody said nothing she said they are accusing her of um bewitching me and when the other one asked what do you mean she said but i can i they didn't say anything but i can see by how they look at me mm -hmm. but why you why would they choose you out of everyone and then she said you know i never meant to do it it's just that i was upset sure so she is not telling us she's telling my mom my grandmother's cousin mm -hmm. who later then came and said i can't keep this to myself Mm. She came to me and said one two three. So my grandmother was a person of you know you need to confront a person and deal yes. with it. So she called her and said Mbigambi Zangosis and said um, what's what's happening? You know what what is going on and she was like I'm sorry. That's all she said. Have you forgiven her? Me. Mm -hmm. I have. I have I believe in forgiveness. Oh. Yes, I have forgiven her. Has she apologized to you? No. Though? She has never said anything to me about <laughs> my leg, my incident, nothing. Are you still suffering from some of the scars on your other leg? I am still suffering from the amputation. Mm. Uh, I get a lot of spasms. I get a lot of like when the weather is not good. Um, I get a lot of uh, pain. Like you can feel that it's the bone. Like I can't really do much about it. Just to take painkillers and try to slip it off. So yeah and even with the prosthetic I used to use crutches to support because I would be using a prosthetic the whole day and then I'd be in a lot of pain at night because oh. of the pressure of the pressure yes okay. and and you know as time goes um I'm older now I also want to live my life like everyone else like yeah. when I'm expecting there's more weight that I'm putting on oh, my yeah. leg. Oh yeah, tell us about that. I mean, you were pregnant. Um I mean, you, of course you've got three kids. Mm -hmm. um, as we close <laughs> it and wrap it up. Yeah. Take us through how it was being a mother, you know, um and how how was it being pregnant? You know, now you you have one leg. Yeah. I just adjusting to that motherhood. When did you fall pregnant and all of that, yeah? So, my first pregnancy I was 16. Oh. And I yeah and I not to try and uh 
I don't know what's the right word justify, to use. Justify, yes, mm. not to make any excuse for myself. But then I think with e- e- confidence and self-esteem growing up, because I had to suffer a lot of bullying because of the lake, mm. you know, because I went to um, a normal school. I didn't go to any special school. So there was a lot of bullying. I'd be called three and a half now. leg. Mm. Yes, I'd be called three and a half leg. And they would draw me in the board and they would tell me that ah, the no boy would want you. You know, all those kind of things. And I think because of that, it made it easy for me to now um, allow boys to play me. Because I wanted to prove people wrong. That you can that get I a man. Can. You know, yes. it's like... Mm. I wanted to prove them wrong. And but then not to say that I regret yes. you know I do love my boy very much that's when then I, I fell pregnant at 16 after falling pregnant at 16 I at 18 then I was pregnant again mm. so I was a teen mom twice twice sure. <laughs> was it not hard it how did you get the help the finances I had the zero. ability to school now yeah. it's a baby yeah so um i think they actually motivated me to be where i am today mm-hmm. so my mother helped me with my oldest mm-hmm. and then with the second one uh, my mother couldn't because she was also pregnant when i was pregnant hey, at 18. sure <laughs> so you were she. pregnant at the same time with your mom i tell you remember now my grand my my dad came back to our lives and they decided to get married when i was 16 and they made a baby Wait, what? <laughs> so your parents were separated. They yeah. decided to get back together. Mm-hmm. And your, your mom is still pregnant. Her father was never in her life because he denied you. Yes. So he never raised you. No. So 16 years later, he's getting back with your mom. And they you get still married. don't have a relationship with no, your father. I still don't. And, and now they're pregnant. getting married. And then they get married. And then they are pregnant when you are pregnant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then they are pregnant when I'm pregnant. So my did you other, <laughs> did you fix the relationship with between you and your dad when he came back? You know, or it was like she, I I couldn't because he I was ex- yeah I, I was expecting I was waiting for him to apologize and he never did. It never mm. happened. Oh, yeah, it it never it never happened. So when did the third baby come? So the third baby came in 2020, mm-hmm. but before the baby came in 2016, in 2016, mm-hmm. then I had another baby in who actually, who unfortunately passed away. Yeah, so so I, I heard her at like five months. Um, sure. And we buried her in June 2017. Three months after burying her, I lost my grandmother. Oh. Three months after my mother, my grandmother, my mother passed. <gasps> so that is how now I became a mother to my brothers. Oh, because of how so irresponsible sorry. my father can be. Wait, so you're raising your mother's kids? Yeah. Because your dad fleed again. He is around sort of fleeing because he's really not part of... So he's doing the life. same thing to your siblings, what he did <laughs> yes, to you. Yes, much similar. Even though now he would call once in three months and be like, oh, I'm thinking about you guys. And be like, oh, okay, great. Okay. Nice. Let's talk about The Climb. <laughs> so you wrote a book. Yes. The Climb... Um, so as we wrapping it up, tell us about the book, where people can get the book. Is the book about your story, yes. about your journey? Because I know we definitely didn't cover everything sure, on the show. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I was still getting to the fourth <laughs> pregnancy that's here. There's you know, the so relationship. <laughs> There's just so much more. So, but but yeah, so much more. There is actually another part that I skipped, but we don't have to go there now. The book is about my life. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a, it, It's about what I've just narrated right now. Mm. Um, It's also about forgiveness, about being resilient, about Mm. being a fighter. Um, fighter. Yes, because there is so much, so much more that I've accomplished. You know, besides my pain, there is so much good that has happened in my life, and um, also to praise the name of the Lord because. I mean, I wouldn't be here without Tell him. Story. Yes. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be. I mean, even the forgiving part and being resilient, I don't think if I was not a believer, I would be. Mm. Amazing. Sure. Okay, Zizo. guys. Sure. This was so amazing. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you for being here. Um, and like I said, if you guys want to hear more of her story, because she's clearly not done, she, she can says always come back. <laughs> she says most, we're also going to put the link on our bio for where you can get the book or phone numbers. She will provide us with that. But I think, you know, against all odds, she made it. Yeah. The moment you live to tell your story and you are smiling 
or laughing it is a testimony so inspiring well so done. encouraging well we're so yes. proud of you and all the best with your pregnancy girl thank you <laughs> oh mama bear what a beautiful <laughs> episode let's meet in the comment section guys it's very yeah. important that you interact with us we want to know your thoughts your feelings how you felt about the story what really touched you how can you relate or do you know anyone else who's gone through the same experience until then for myself innocent and myself Melissa and our awesome guests so it's, it's bye, bye for now, now.